Mm. Yeah, that looks good. Oh, hey, you caught me putting in beard oil. I Yeah, I got the C6 Steve starter kit going on here. Nice mirror, huh? Hey, guys, I you just hit me. I'm confused. I set up the music for today, which, by the way, is the legendary Lead Belly on an obtuse label called Olympic Records. Try to find this one if you can. Don't covet my record. But it almost sounds like he's saying keep your Hanes on. Has Hanes been around that long? But anyway, that's probably pretty good advice, especially for people in juke joints. Keep your Hanes on. Thank you, legendary Lead Belly. Um, did you know that uh, Lead Belly, uh, Hetty Ledbetter, was actually an inmate who had committed murder or two or several and was in Parchman Penitentiary, the Mississippi Penitentiary, not known for its hospitality. Anyway, John Lomax, Alan Lomax's father, I don't want to get into the records here, but they um, had teamed up with the Library of Congress to capture some songs of uh, folk people and inmates and things like that. Anyway, they basically took this guy out of prison and took him on a, a, a tour. Um, I think he even played Carnegie Hall. So if you know how to get out of prison for murder and end up in Carnegie Hall, um, maybe you're the next lead belly. Anyway, enough history. Let's talk about the topic. We're calling this one Old Box New? No, New Box Old. New Box Old. All right, let's pretend. Let's pretend that you have this really cool license plate. I don't have it. You're not coveting. Let's pretend you have it. And let's pretend you want to make a guitar out of it. But let's pretend, blah, 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 rented lips, that you do not have a Padron 7000 box. A Padron 7000 box. Did you know that they're perfect for license plates? Yeah, you're welcome. I'm here to help you. But say you don't have that. Say you like something a little bit beefier now. You know that there are a lot of kits coming out on the market. So if you... You know, if you don't want to talk about this and you're a purist, then click this so I can get out. But you know that I've done a few kits. Um, this is a license plate kit that comes from MGB Guitars. It's a good one. Um, it's sturdy. It's big. It kind of gives you um, a uh, um, the feel of a, a, a regular guitar. Now, the thing about this kit is it's better for longer scales, neck scales, just because of its appearance. Um, it, the, again, the body's beefy and big. Um, and so the longer the neck is, the better. And then, of course, you want to watch where your bridge goes. Now, while I'm plugging MGB, they got another one here called the Comet. So I got one of these kits. I think I'm going to build this out and put um, like an Epiphone style neck, the one that's got the tuners on the same side. And we'll do an episode on this, and I'll show you how it is. I'm thinking that since it's a Comet, I want, might want to put some Milky Way or Planet graphic on this. We'll see what happens but in this episode we're going to use this smaller um, kit it's put out by Sawyer um, and I'll give you a link to all of these below so look down in the information section it'll say kits and where to find them in case you want to do that but we're going to be working with this um, cigar box guitar frame or da -da -da. License plate, Frank, got so much going on. I'm getting old. Yeah, it's my birthday pretty soon, so get ready with them gifts. Uh, but anyway, we're going to use this one. But do you really like the way this looks? It looks pretty spiffy and stuff. So we're going to listen to Lad Belly, the murderer who became the pop star of the 30s and 40s, um, while we take this and make new box old. Let's get to the bench. All right, let's get started with, there it is, the legendary lead belly over there in that high fidelity instrument there. Legendary lead belly on a Monday. Catfish Keith does a good version of that. Let's get back over here. I got this license plate guitar frame glued up, clamps ready to come off, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. We need to get this out of the way and get down to what's really important. Let's do a little zoom in on the do not covet area. What do we got here? Well, let me get my pointer out. We've got the Sears 620 Deluxe. You are always on surveillance. Always. 
do not covet my Sears 620 Deluxe. And speaking of being on surveillance, you know, back in 1956, expires 331. That's my birthday, 331. Write that on your calendar. I got some stuff that you are going to buy me, 331. I'm not quite that old, but anyway, it isn't that cool. Anyway, back in Pennsylvania in 1957, they didn't have this license plate recognition. Something else they didn't have is the cell phones, you couldn't, they weren't listening to you on your cell phones, taking pictures of you and stuff. So I got the cure for that. What you want to do is when you're done doing your business, make your business brief. You know, you really don't like to talk to people anyway, right? That's why you're hiding in a shed building cigar box, but... Do your business and then always close this thing because that way they can't hear you. Listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. All right, let's zoom. Other way, the other zoom out. Let's zoom out and get our camera set up right. You know, don't covet my stuff, I'm telling you. If you worked as hard as I do, you might have some of that same kind of stuff someday. Keep trying. Anyway. I'm going to start pulling these clamps off of here, and uh, I'm sure you don't want to hear any more of my rhetor rhetoric, rented lips, after all that. So I'm going to pull these clamps off of here, and I'll catch back up with you. All right, there we go. Last one, we're going to hang that up nice up there, get them out of the way, pick up this other stuff, get my legendary lead belly display set back up brainwash you with my Paul Miro junk pile guitar logo again thank you the illustrious Tim Lohman for doing that but anyway this is what it looks like um, now we're just in time before we start doing our cutout for this and our finishes and all that I want to take this a belt sander and make sure that this is nice nice and smooth see you there Okay, guys, this is literally not rocket science. You're basically running this on the flat part of the belt like so. On the corners, you're going around like this. You're smoothing all this out, making this look nice. Of course, we're going to start off by cleaning the belt off with this belt cleaner. And you don't need to hear all this, so let's just watch. Okay, guys, remember I did an episode called Neck Heel Board. Remember that? I'm going to give you an eye card up there to it. Remember we did this? And now, when I got to drop this down here, a couple things going on here. You feel this back here? No, of course you can't feel it. You're on YouTube. But can you smell that? <laughs> anyway, that's a little tight back there. So we got a couple things to do here first. I'm going to take this gadget have you ever seen one of these man this is a lifesaver it's a little narrow belt sander you can just take this touch that there touch that there and work that out i'm not going to cause you ear damage by doing that but let's just set this back up here now you can see the idea here is this is supposed to be flat down to here so i've got some lineup to do already know where I want my bridge to be like so so I'm gonna take this in a little bit like that put the license plate like that every everything lines up and we know that my bridge is gonna go right there and I want to cut this off right about here but anyway first thing we need to do is figure out how much deeper we want to notch this out, which is simply taking this, putting it on here, sliding it down, because that being gone would make this flush. And then, in addition to widening that out just a tad, 
I take this, I come over to here like so, and I mark that, which is going to put me right down in there. So I'm going to cut most of this out and it will receive this neck. How confusing is that? The bottom line is I want to get all of that done and get all of my holes drilled and everything I'm going to need before I start painting this. So let me do that and then I'll catch up with you. All right, we notched that down like so. It's going to sit here. I'm going to have to, I think I'm going to cut a couple notches little notch right there in the neck. So I'm going to line this up, get this box where it needs to be, and that matters where this is going to sit right at the edge of that. Make sure everything's where I want it. My bridge is going to be, as I take my fancy Beverly Hills scale measuring board, is going to be about right there. There we go, I can slide that there we go, that's perfect. So I'm gonna make my marks there, 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 and there. And that way I can do a little notch in here, but this box is ready for us to make look like it's been laying out in a ditch for a while, and that's what we want to do. Okay guys, we are at a point right now where everything's kind of laid out the way we need it to be. I got a little bit more work to do um, on the neck and, and stuff, but that doesn't involve the box. So the goal here is we want to take this box. It looks like it's first day on the earth. In oil field, we would call this a worm box. Hey worm, meaning you don't know what you're doing. It looks pretty spiffy. We don't want that. We actually want the box to look like this. And if you can see here, there's a tint of what looks like maybe a house that was painted in a weird green, seashell green or teal color, and then painted or aged gray, and it just, the wood just eroded or something or deteriorated. And then it's got this aged, streaking, yeah, it looks like, old wood and that's what we want all right lead belly's tearing it up in the background that's good isn't it weird his story about being in prison and being rescued by the Lomaxes. anyway i find that amazing but how we're going to do this is we're going to start with an undercoat of spray and this is a um, vintage teal is the color it's a rust-oleum product we're going to go around and loosely spray along here now we don't need to coat this five or six times and get it really thick because what we want to do then is come in with this chalk paint. Now we're getting real crafty on you. It's this gray chalk paint. Anyway, um, I have to run this under hot water to get it open, but it's chalk paint. You can see that color. And then we're going to do an overdressing once this color dries with the chalk paint all the way around. Once that is done and dried, we're going to take our sandpaper or do whatever we want to do. And we're going to go along the edges and scuff this up to where this color bleeds through a little bit, but there's still plenty of gray. Again, the idea is we're looking for something that looks like aged, worn wood that's maybe been painted a couple different colors a couple times. Now, the reason I picked this is it goes good with this license plate. It'll be a good backdrop for that. And of course the neck being its color and varnish will complement that well. Now, once that's all done and everything is dried and we have it the way we want it, I'm gonna come in with this antiquing glaze, which gives you this weird streaky hit and miss thing here. And we'll see how all that works. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go outside and we are going to make our first coat and probably our only coat of this vintage teal. Now, 
if you notice that suddenly there's huge climate change around your home and there's not wasn't glaciers there before and now suddenly there is hey don't look at me all right so there we go you can see that i've sprayed a coat of this on here and you can kind of tell by looking at it. it's kind of hit and miss there's some here some there different thicknesses along the way but the moral of the story is i just want this to be on here so when i put the chalk paint the gray chalk paint and cover this i can come along with uh, a file and just go over the edges and stuff or maybe even a little belt sander here and there and just kind of scuff a little bit of this up to show you a hint of that this box is really looks like it's 80 years old when it's really three days old um, this is not a new principle to cigar box guitars um, I think the original principle of taking something that's three days old and making it look like 80 years old wait a minute I'm confused I was going to say that that started in Beverly Hills but I think it's quite the opposite where you take something that's 80 years old and make it look like it's three years old you with me anyway anything I can do to make this interesting while we watch paint dry okay guys I have waited a while for this enamel to dry I don't want to put anything over it when it's not dry because that'll mess up the whole project but you can see there's nothing coming off my hands again um, it's kind of sparse here and there different thicknesses some of it was completely missed that's okay now I'm going to take this gray chalk paint and I don't mean to turn into some uh, trendy hipster shabby chic because I already am all that you know that the natural at all crafts anyway so I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to put an even coat of this gray paint over the top of this whole box now I'm going to make sure that I get good coverage all the way around on this I'm not trying to make this a sparse coating or try to get all fancy and crafty here and uh, although I might want to paint a little bit of a happy tree right there doesn't that look like a happy tree okay I got a cap an obvious hint for you here I didn't paint this part um, because I want to be able to flip this over like so and work the edges like this see now this stuff is really thick See what I'm doing here? Do you really, really need me to do all the sides so you get it? Yeah, this is not rocket science. Catch up with you in a minute. All right, there we go. Now we're gonna flip this down like this. We're gonna get that last section. Now I'm gonna have to paint the bottom separate in another few minutes. What I really wanna do here is make sure that none of this paint is clumped up on anything that is too thick or something like that this I want to be on evenly and again we're gonna let that dry thoroughly and I'm not gonna do more than one coat that's the important thing so make sure that your first coat is where you want it I'm not gonna paint the inside of the box and I've already caused a glacier at your house I don't need to cause the planet to realign or something so anyway I'm, I'm just trying to be responsible here right okay then all right guys paint dry very exciting watching it dry um quick uh what we're doing here remember we've got an undercoat of enamel spray we've got some chalk paint over the top we've got one more treatment to make with this antiquing glaze there it is in the camera and if I quit dropping everything the idea is is that we will end up with something like this looking aged which will go along with our Mississippi license plate that's going to go on here so now what we want to do is we want to take sandpaper a file whatever it takes to be 
brushing this down or sanding this down a little bit so we can get some of this teal color popping out from underneath. Now I've got a piece of emery cloth. I got a roll of this stuff. And this stuff's pretty good because it's pretty rough. And you just come across the edges. You want to bear down on the edges like so until some of this teal starts showing through. Okay, so if you use the belt sander um, real lightly, and of course make sure that you clean off your belt before you start. But we're just going to take and knock this down a little bit and um, also do a little bit on the top here where we can get some of this wore down a little bit more. Uh, but we'll turn the sound down and get a quick look at the technique. Okay guys, we're getting close. I got this emery cloth here. I like the way some of this wood actually came through. We still got the teal here, you can see. Uh, but this box looks pretty distressed. It'll look good, especially against this blue of this license plate. Um, notice I switched the license plate. Um, this one's going to go to a raffle. I'm not giving away the, the one that... <laughs> As the county sun house was born and that took me a while that was going to stay at home but before i carry on with the next step which is to put this antique glaze on which is going to pop out um, some of the imperfections here um, on this paint and these lines and stuff when i mount this plate i'm going to want to do a couple of things here i want to make sure i know exactly where i need it to be which involves me putting the neck on like so okay and I want this I don't want this to be at the edge like this can you see that I want it to be in just a little bit the plate will be look at that that's a humbucker my flat humbucker that's gonna work out well I want this plate to be kind of evened up like so and when I get it where I need it to be then I'm gonna slide the neck can you see here back up against that plate so that looks pretty good wanna, I'm only gonna do this once so it matters that's there so now I'm gonna take and do an X right in the middle of where my holes are gonna be for the license plate now I could use deck screws to put these in and I would just do that to to irritate deck screw hater you know who you are dude that package you sent me was pretty cool but I'm still never gonna forgive you son anyway these are called T nuts you've seen these before I'm gonna drill a hole right there and you see it's got two little spots for screws the same size screws we use to hold our tuners on but I'm gonna drill this down where this piece fits down in each one of these holes and then with that flat like this on top of there when I put my license plate on, this knot will screw all the way down in there like that. See now if I use deck screws, after a while, if I want to take something out, um, all of our electronics and everything are going to be in here. If I want to take something out of here and I'm pulling them screws in and out, sooner or later they're going to get loose. So once we get this, these, this lined up where we want it to be, then I'm going to uh, finish up this box. Now i got to cut this off and do a lot of tailpiece work and tape this and everything. But anyway, I'll show you real quick uh, what those holes look like when I'm done. And then we'll finish up the finish on this. Finish up the finish? Really?
All right, I got uh, the place to mount the uh, license plate, the screws. Um, they can slide back and forth just a little bit because of the slots and the license plate. Um, and all I have to do to the box now really is I'll end up putting one of my grease certs up in this corner, which I'll do later, uh, a strap pin here and, and the jack over there, but I can get that a little bit later. So everything's good to go here. Now I'm going to take this stuff to here, this antique glaze. And um, I've shaken it up really well. And see, this is dark, dark stuff. So you don't want to put it on thick. And you certainly don't want anything around that you're going to slop this on or anything. But i got this brush here. And I've got a folded up piece of paper towel. So I can just do what I need to do there. But I'm just going to put this on like so. And then take my paper towel and rub it off. I don't want to leave it on there any more than I have to but you can tell that all of a sudden this starts to get looks like the wood is really aged here so and as it dries it'll lighten up just a little bit but anywhere where you've got pockets and, and grooves and things this stuff will dig in there and, and soak in so the whole thing is to kind of give it this look like it's old. See? See the comparison between that and that? So now I'm going to do the sides and then everything and I'll give you a, a shot when it's done. Alright, there we go. The good news about this stuff, this glaze, is it is water cleanup, believe it or not. Um, and it sticks to everything I've sprayed there. And like I said, this is going to lighten up a little bit. But um, compared to the original color, um, I like that a lot. And it looks like you made it out of really old wood. So I'm going to like that. And uh, I'll, do, I'll let this dry and I'll do a quick mock-up to show you what it looks like with the neck and everything on. And then we'll close out. Alright, there we go. We have the T-nuts in for our plate. So all we have to do is just set that on there like so. And then we put these on uh, like so with a washer. Let me get some stuff out of the way here. Let's pop the neck in here if I can find it. There it is. Once again, I'm ill prepared. Uh, I'm going to varnish this neck and make it so it won't be so spiffy new but there we go we just pop this in put one over here I'm not gonna have you waiting for your social security check arrive to arrive before I get these nuts in nothing's going right today let's flip that around Whoever invented flathead screws, think that out, would you? How often do we really need that, right? Anyway, enough complaining. I'd make somebody a great mother-in-law, right? So, uh, we still got the bottom and stuff to put on, but I like the way that looks. I think it turned out pretty good. All right, one last thing. Well, I'm getting these bolts tightened down I forgot to talk about was people ask me, you know, why do you have your neck and your fingerboard so far above the top of the box? Well, I use these flat humbuckers and uh, we stuff that wire down in here. And that humbucker, I don't have to, the way this is configured, I don't have to cut a piece out of the neck. I can just hot glue that right there and get it away from the edges of the metal and then second thing is oh by the way if you use these it has a tendency to turn the whole plate into a pickup um, I, I haven't figured out yet whether or not that detracts from the uh, power of the pickup or not when you uh, disperse it over a license plate but whatever that's another topic for another day and then finally 
you know I use these floating bridges like you got on the old arch top I take this off take these studs out mark them out right there so I still have to do some work to take this down but these, this bridge sits up pretty high so that's why this is up and um, now we're way off out in the weeds. Okay so back to reality uh, when you're building kits um, or even making these boxes yourself or you're cutting them out with a laser cutter or you're just using an old piece of wood or uh, in a miter box or you're actually using a Patron box there's a there's a box that actually is a good size for license plates uh, No, I'm not selling out on Camacho, but uh, yeah, I think this looks a lot better Than this so I mean if you're a purist and you have to use a cigar box then you should have given me a dislike and checked out a long time ago which reminds me Give me a like give me a dislike if you need to a subscribe and click a notification I want to tell you that um, the music has been the legendary Lead Belly on Olympic Records. This is a good one. It's a lot of his basic stuff, but it's what you've been listening to in the background. And I will give you a link below. Make sure you click that, and I will see you next time.